some people before I was raised up in a denominational church. And at a denominational church, the pastor was the boss. You know what I'm saying? The pastor was the boss. And, and so nobody else could preach in, in his pulpit. Nobody else could come in and, and all these other kind of things. But the Holy Spirit told me one time, he, he told me, he said, it's the same message, it's just a different person. If the Holy Spirit has a message for Karis Family Church, which He does, it's just a different person. Amen? Just a different person. We're just ah. vessels to speak the Word of God. To speak life. And that's what I want to do this morning. I want to speak life Amen. to you this morning. I want to share some life-giving things with you this morning that the Lord has really helped me with. That I've been, I've been down before, but the Lord lifted me up. Amen. How many of you? How many of you ever, ever, uh, ever? Uh, well, <laughs> I was going to say something. But how many of you ever begin to talk before you prayed about it? <laughs> Amen. So we better pray. Hallelujah, Father. God, uh, we need you. We, our minds, our subconscious, our hearts many times, Lord, will lead us in the wrong direction. But God, I'm standing in your word when you said, open my mouth and you will fill it. The things that Jesus has said, Holy Spirit, that you bring back to memory. Bring your message this morning, Father. Your message this morning, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. 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 I was telling some folks before, I looked up and part of the definition is shine. Who do we want to shine? God. Amen. God Almighty. Everything is done to magnify God Almighty. Amen. Shine most passionate and energetic one. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He is dancing. He is singing. And He is praising. Because you are you. Did you hear me? You are you. God made you. He tailor made a calling for your life. He tailor made a calling for your life. So you won't just have some general calling. He has a specific call on your life. That He wants you to know about. A lot of people think, oh, I have to seek it. I have to seek it. I have to seek it. No, you just have to, what we talked about earlier, hearken. Hearken. Listen. Listen. Listen to the Holy Spirit. How do we do that? We have to get to a place of peace and rest. We have, we have to stop. We have to stop and let Him let Him speak to us. Many times, have you ever been in a conversation when you didn't get to talk at all? And I know we've talked about this, you know. You pick up the phone. You pick up the phone. Hey, how you doing? Good, good to, good to hear you from you. Good to talk to you. I'm glad you're here. Oh man, that's good. That's awesome. Thank the Lord for that we're doing this and we're doing this and we're doing this and we're doing this and we need this and we need that and we need this and we need that and I don't know how this is going to happen, how this is going to happen and how this is going to happen. Goodbye. That's how we talk to God a lot of times. But you know, the more... It, I finally got it through my fixed goal that the more that I... That I shut my mouth and listen. Amen? The more that I shut my mouth. How, how many of you fellas remember when you was in your 20s? Some of you ain't there yet. You knew everything. You knew everything. You could fix anything. But Jim, how many projects have we got apart and never got them back together? And we had to throw them away, haul them off, whatever. You know, I'm from Texas. A redneck, and and back in the day, you know, in your garage, you I had so many projects because I knew how to fix it. I knew how to fix it. I didn't know how to fix it. 
I just knew everything. But a lot of times we come to God like that. I need this, and I need this, and I need this. One of the best things that anybody ever told me before was come to the Father like a child. He has a tailor-made call on your life. Romans chapter number 8, please, this morning. Romans chapter number 8. <clears throat> Verse number 15. Well, let's read verse 14 because I like it. He says, As many as are led, as many as are led, as many as are leading, as many as are telling, as many as are led, led, led. Katie, do you trust me? You sure you trust me? Yeah. Hallelujah. Let me get that for you. Okay. Got it. As many as are what? Led. Led. Amen. That's not how he leads you. Let me kill him on my It's okay. This is Jonah. <laughs> this is Jonah. As many as are led. As many. Anybody got it yet? As are led. See, God don't, God don't, God don't, God don't do that. He doesn't do that. No, what does He do? He takes, oh, oh, backwards, sorry. He takes your hand and leads you. He waits. He carries your books for you. Hallelujah. And He waits. And He waits. Go ahead, man. You may have a seat if you like. And he sits, you know, you sit down, you read the word, he just sets the word in front of you. Amen. Let me need to shut this. I think our cold air is getting out. As many as are led by the Spirit, they are, <clears throat> excuse me, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How are we led? 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. We'll go back to Romans in a minute. 1 John chapter 4. Hallelujah. 1 John chapter 4. <clears throat> in verse number 15. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth where? In Him. Where? In Him. How are we led? The still small voice speaking to you on the inside. Amen. The Holy Spirit speaking to you on the inside. And He speaks to you on the inside with that still small voice. He said that out of the heart comes the issues of life. What are you being issued this morning? What's being issued to you this morning? What are your issues? Amen. Some of us got, anybody got issues? Mm. I got issues. I got issues. Not as many as I used to, thank the Lord, because He's getting rid of them, amen? But the issues, what are the issues? Well, a lot of the issues that we have are not good issues. But if you will let the Holy Spirit that's on the inside of you issue through your heart, that brings life to you. And the power of the stuff. A lot of people think it's like superstitious. Don't say that. Oh, you ever heard about the, you ever seen the, the, the conversation police? Oh, don't say that. Don't say, have you ever go to pray with someone? Oh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna speak it. I'm not gonna speak about it. Well, I don't, you know what? I'm gonna speak about it because I'm gonna laugh in the face of the devil whenever I claim and whenever I speak what it is that's gonna be defeated. Amen. And I've I've seen people they they say, Oh, I'm not gonna talk about it, but it's the C word. That's what they told me I had. They told me I had the C word. Is that congestion? Is that COPD? Is that cough? Is that croup? You know, what, this, this, no, I, okay, the doctor said you have cancer. Hallelujah. He says, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. Why? Why? Because we laugh in the face of the enemy. And we say, look, cancer, look, look, cancer, and we address the cancer. How many of you have ever, <clears throat> now, y'all might think this is crazy, but I, it doesn't matter. How many of you have ever uh, don't lift your hand, but remember a time have ever cast out uh, cast out a demon. Uh, you've been in some dark places before, and some people were were uh, were possessed or 
Uh, yeah, some people that they're lost, they, they were oppressed, possessed. What are we supposed to call that? And, and what? How was, is the only way that you could do that? You had to identify. You didn't have to ask them their name. You didn't have to do all that. But you had to identify what was going on, so you could speak directly to it and cast it out. He says, "Take up serpents." That word, "taking up serpents." It's, it, he's, he's, it's, it's talking about for the, for the sole meaning of casting them out. So when that serpent cancer raises its head, allergies raise their head, heart problems raise their head, high blood pressure raises its head, high, the diabetes raises its head, or whatever it is raises its head, you identify what it is and you say, No! I caught you. And you can't be here. You can't be here. Hallelujah. Because out of the inside of you, what is spoken by the Lord, it's the power that's behind your tongue that makes a difference. The information or the knowledge that you want to just, just to regurgitate onto people is not helping them very much. But when you speak revelation to people, you speak revelation to people. Something that you know the Holy Spirit has shared with you. That's life-giving word. And death and life are in the poor. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Therefore, I can say that He sent forth His word to heal you. And it is God's word that heals you. And the word spoken over you by the stripes of Jesus, you are already healed. That's the power. It's not some superstitious conjuring up something. It's the power. The first three words of, of Hebrews chapter 11. Now, faith is. It's time we get back to the real, raw. Thank you, Abby. You're just on it, girl. We get, on, we get back to the real, raw true meaning of the Word of God was just real and plain. He didn't make the Word of God complicated. Matter of fact, I read a book not too long ago. And uh, now you, you, whatever you feel, you do what you feel. But uh, the, the old, the old uh, versions, the old version of the Word of God was written on a, on a fourth to fifth grade level. People learn to read by reading this book right here. People learn to read by reading this book right here. It's the power of the tongue. The issues of life. Proverbs uh, chapter number 4, I think it is, talks about the issues. Amen? Somebody say issues. Hallelujah. I got good issues. Anybody got good issues? Amen. I got good issues. Hallelujah. He says in, in verse number 14, he said, They are the sons of God. How many of you are a child of God? Amen. You're a child of the Most High God. Hallelujah. How many of you have been translated into the kingdom of God? Amen. I've been translated. Somebody say, I've been translated. Amen. Beam me up, Scotty. I'm in it. Hallelujah. What is the kingdom of God? Righteousness, peace, and joy. Oh, Jesus, help me with the joy thing. Amen. The oil of gladness is poured out on us because just as Jesus is in this world, in this, uh, just as Jesus is, so are we in this world. He had the oil of gladness poured out on me. I am joy. Amen. I am joy. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I am joy. Hallelujah. You look at the fruit of the Spirit and you say, oh, I got to get those fruit. I got to get those fruit. Well, you got those fruit. Amen. You got it. Somebody say, I got it. Hallelujah. So I am what he says I am. I am joy. I am peace. I am love. Hallelujah. He says next, he says, For we, for ye have not received, verse 15, Romans chapter number 8. I'm trying to be nice to you, Abby. Thank you. Romans 8, 15, he says, For we, y'all know the scripture. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage 
What did we talk about last week? How many of you remember what we talked about last week? What was the guy's name? He was what? He was raised from the dead. What's his name? Lazarus. And what we talked about, Lucy. Lucy. And let him go. What did that take? Somebody had to go move the stone. Jesus didn't say, let me move the stone. Jesus didn't point his finger and just start to roll the stone. He said, y'all go move the stone. Y'all, somebody said, y'all go move the stone. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, you need to move my stone. Oh, that's a hard one. Hallelujah. But humility comes before honor. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody need to move my stone. Amen. Somebody move his stone. Somebody move her stone. Somebody move their stone. And then Jesus called Lazarus out. And what did he tell him next? What did he tell him next to do? He said, loose him and let him go. <clears throat> a lot of times we want to loose other people. Now here we're going to turn it around. We want to loose other people, but we're bound up ourselves. You're bound up yourself. Bound up by religion. Bound up by blame. Bound up by, by shame. Bound up by what you did last night. Bound up by what you did last week. Bound up by what you looked at yesterday. Bound up with what you watched on TV. Bound up with what you're seeing on the internet. Bound up because of the habits that you got. Bound up by all these things. With Colossians chapter number 1, verse number verse number something in there. Verse number 22 says that he sees us holy, unblameable, unreprovable. Hallelujah, i got to say it again. He sees me holy, unblameable, unreprovable in the sight. In his sight, because of what Jesus did for me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. For you brought me. I remember, I remember a time whenever I was in the old garage back in Texas. <clears throat> It's out in the garage in Texas, and, and I'm just going to get real with you. Can I get real with you? Will it hurt your feelings? Will it hurt your ears? I'm not going to cuss or anything, okay? I don't do that no more. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Ask my wife. You can, hey, you can ask my wife. I don't cuss no more. Thank you, Lord. I don't think. Anyway, <clears throat> in the garage, have my 30 pack. Anybody ever been there? Mm -hmm. Come on now. Somebody get real with me. Anybody ever been there have a 30 pack? And there probably wasn't but two left. You know what I'm saying? Amen. It didn't matter. And I, it was so terrible. It didn't matter if they was hot or cold or lukewarm or what. As long as I had it. Amen. All the stupid things that I've done in my life. I remember. <clears throat> okay. Here we go. God has called me to, to be a, a, a prophet. That's what God, that, I know that's what God's call is on my life. And the same thing he told me. We said, talking about a while ago, sitting with the Lord. And then he has a tailor-made call for your life. Yeah. Sitting with the Lord, he shared this with me. After he shared these things with me, I began to try to escape reality because... Because effects of other things, I'm not trying to make excuses, but I'm telling you, if you got things, other things that are affecting you, you need to get some help. You need to get some accountability. You need to get somebody. You need to get a friend, a real friend that will help you, that will sit with you. And whenever you feel like going to the store and buying a six pack, they say, "No, come over to the house." I, they don't really have time for it. They don't really feel like it because they're tired. They've been working all day, but they will sit with you. And drink a cup of coffee instead of drinking Coors or Budweiser or tequila or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Come on now. Come on, y'all. Oh, are we too good for this? Are we are we too good for this? No, we're not. We're not too somebody say, I'm not too good for this. <laughs> because you know what? It's only by the grace of God that you ain't in the same place and that I ain't in the same place anymore. Because people love me. Brought me out of it, amen. But I remember a time whenever I was there, God called me to be a prophet, and what He showed me in, in Jeremiah chapter number one about the uh, the uh, the almond branch. I was walking around the front yard, scooting my feet because I was just about halfway lit. You know what I'm saying, brother? And I looked down. <laughs> and at the same time. I was drunk. The Lord said, look down 
and there was a, there was a almond branch. He said, pick it up. I still got it. He said, pick it up. Why? Because God's call is without repentance. God has a call on your life. It doesn't matter what you've done, how you feel, or what you're doing now. God's call is still there. You are not under bondage. And thanks be to God, I am unblameable because of the blood of Jesus. And it's because of the blood of Jesus that makes you unblameable. You are worthy of the call. Because of the good things that you've done? No. Because we're a mess. Amen? We're a mess. But thank God he don't see that. He sees how much he loves us. How much he cares for us. We not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. But you receive spirit of adoption. The spirit of adoption. Now think about when someone goes to adopt someone, someone goes to adopt a child, they don't just go to the front door of the adoption center and say, send one out. Do they? They go through a process. Hey, glad you're here. They go through a process. I hope that doesn't embarrass anyone, but I just like to say hi. They go through a process, and part of that process is they actually go, part of the process is they actually go and pick that one out. This is the best fit. This is the best fit. Now, I know God picked us all out. Amen? He did. Jesus died for everybody. But on a personal level, he went through a process. And he looked at every single one of us. And he picked us out. The God of the universe looked at you. And all the things that you've done, you're going to do, or you're doing now, he overlooked it, and he picked you out for a specific call on your life Amen. that he has tailored made Amen. for you. Amen. And this is the same God that created the stars and the universe. But yet, he pointed his hand at you and says, I want that one. I want that one. I want that one. How, how long did that take? How many people's here? Can you imagine that? Oh, no, that one, that one, that one. Thank God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's got a call on your life. But Ephesians chapter 1. Let me, let me, let me tell you how, how the Lord helped me with that. I was, I was listening to uh, Andrew uh, teaching on on how to find, follow, and fulfill God's word. Okay, well, let me tell you something. If you don't, if you don't know, <coughs> take it or leave. If you don't know the specific call that God has on your life, you have an an, an open door for Satan to come in and bring in discouragement and depression and all these things and tell you that you have no purpose. You need to know what God has called you to do. Well, it does. I think God called me to do that, but I don't know how that could be. So, He didn't tell you you need to know how it could be. He said, just so, say, okay. Amen. Deuteronomy 28 again. What did He say? A listen and attend. Listen and attend. Agree with God. Agree with God. Hallelujah. This disagreement stuff is just crazy anymore, ain't it? I'm offended. Anybody offended? Everybody's offended. I'm offended and I'm offended because you did this and you did this and you did this. And they're only offended because they didn't think of it first. 
they're, they're not getting up off their chair and doing it themselves, amen. They're offended because they're, they're frustrated and, and depressed and all these things, and, and they don't feel like they have a purpose. It's Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. And the Lord God of, of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Wisdom and revelation. I said, God, I need you to reveal to me what the call is on my life that you have on my life. So that is revelation. Amen. Revelation. And he says the spirit of wisdom and revelation. So the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit begins to reveal things to you. But how did that happen? What's the next word? In the knowledge of who? Him. Him. So, I said, God, how does that work? How does that work? He took me to John 15. He says, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, the Comforter, the Comforter. Some of y'all need some, somebody needs some comfort this morning. The Comforter, the Comforter will come. And what does he do? He testifies of Jesus. He glorifies who? Jesus. So I begin to say, Holy Spirit, okay, would you show me Jesus? Would you teach me Jesus? Because whenever we know what Jesus knows, we know what needs to be known. Does that make sense to anybody? When you know what Jesus knows, you know what needs to be known. And the Holy Spirit teaches you those things, okay? So when you know what Jesus knows, you know what needs to be known. The Spirit of Revelation begins to show you Reveal, revelation, reveal to you. And I say, God, I need you to reveal your call on my life. What is it? So, I just sat down, and I'm going to tell you, this may seem sacrilege, it may seem terrible, but I, it, for a moment, now he did confirm in the Word, but for a moment, I said, God, I'm not going to try to study the Word like a minister and understand so I'll have a message or so I'll have a teaching or so I'll have my more ammo in my, in my preaching gun and all this kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? I said, God, I just need to know. And I sat with Him and I listened to Him and I waited. I didn't have to wait very long. You know why you don't have to wait very long? Because the Holy Spirit wants to tell you. He wants somebody to say, the Holy Spirit wants to tell me. Yes, He does. Amen. And then He told me. And then He told me, He says, pick up the Bible. He took me to Jeremiah chapter 1. He showed me specifically. Specifically. And He taught me who. He taught me what is my calling. He revealed that to me. After he revealed that to me, after a while, I was sitting, uh, it had been some time, after a while I was sitting, and, and, and I was sitting in the, in the office at the church back in Texas where I was, and just sitting with the Lord, and saying, okay, God, if you want me to read something, uh, I, I'm reading this, and if you got something to show me, I'm sure you do, but show me what you want to show me, I need that. Again, in the knowledge of Him. The more we know Jesus, the more we know what needs to be known. And so I was sitting with Jesus, sitting with Jesus, just listening to Him. And He showed me again. First of all, He confirmed, yes, that is the call on your life. And then He began to explain more and more and more and more and more of who exactly He's called me to be. And I was sitting in an old, hundred-year-old church, peering beam, wood frame, with a little electric heater, I think, because it was cold, because the heater didn't keep up just right like it was supposed to back in that room. And sitting there with him in this little place where nobody, let me tell you something, nobody, wanted to come to church. <laughs> I really, nobody. It wasn't good. I mean, we were nice to people. We couldn't even give away hot dogs, y'all. People wouldn't even come get a hot dog. Nobody. And I 
I'm, and I would think that doesn't make any sense. What you call me to do. But it don't matter what I think. It matters what's revealed to you. And I still have that word. It's planted. It's there. And it ain't going nowhere. It ain't going nowhere. Amen. It's not going anywhere. It's there. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. The call that He has. But what is if Ephesians chapter 1 again? Anybody need some coffee? You getting bored yet? The eyes of your understanding. What? Being enlightened. Being enlightened. That you may know what is the hope of his calling. Now I know this is very general. But he took me to this scripture. The hope of his calling. The hope of his calling. He's pointing out it's his calling. It's not mine. It's his calling. Because see, if you make it, if you try to make it all your, all, all about you and all about your calling and, and you, and I know I've said it's my calling because that's what God, he gave it to me, amen, but it's still his. You try to make it all yours, it will be. And you'll try to do it on your own. And you'll fail, and you fall, and you get frustrated, and you begin to question: Is this really what God wants me to do? Is this really what God wants me to do? Well, if that's what He said. That's what He said. Stick with it. Don't try to figure it out on your own. Okay. So, what's the whole point of this? What's the whole point of this? He has a call. Know who you are in God. Know who you are in Christ. Amen. Remember what I said? He has a specific call. Tailor made for your life. Each and every one. These little world changers here. Amen. Amen. He has a call already on their life. Mm -hmm. World changers. Yeah. Raise you, raising our kids like world changers. Amen. Hallelujah. You say, well, I can't. If this is like this, and that's like that, and that's like that. Hogwash. Y'all know what hogwash is? It ain't worth nothing. Because what's the hog going to do? Go back into the slop. Amen? <laughs> Get dirty again because they're nasty. That's what hog, hogwash. That's that's what a lot of our thoughts are. Amen? It's just good for nothing. Amen? The call that he has. The call. That he has on your life. What is it? Do you want to know what it is? Do you want to know what the specific call on your life is? Now I know the general call: heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out the. Amen. Yeah. Amen. All right. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out the. Well, if I could just do that, then I know. No. No. In the knowledge of him. Not in finding out how to do these things. Other things. No. In the knowledge of who? Him. Jesus. In the knowledge of Jesus. I want, I want you as an act of faith. As an act of faith. If you want to know God's specific call on your life, would you either lift your hand or stand? Would you do one of the two? Would you do that? Either lift your hand or stand. Hallelujah. 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 Garen, do you have some, some uh, not some loud, crazy, crazy music, but like some mellow worship music, brother, you can play? Do you have something you can play right now? Do you mind? Thank you. Just get, either keep your hand up or, or stand up. Or, or if now you feel like, because somebody else stood up, you feel like you can stand up also. Or you just feel like you can stand up also. And I want you to, I want other people to look around the room. Look around the room. And if you see these people, would you just go lay hands on them and pray? Just go lay hands on them and pray and help them. You're not there to tell them what their call is. You're there to help them. You're there to help them. You're not there to tell them what their call is. You're there to help them. Would you 
would you just move and go pray with those people? Just go pray with those people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Holy Spirit, we agree. People get around and pray with some folks, will you? You love them, you care for them. Don't you want them to know? You want them to know. Don't be, don't be, don't be ashamed. You feel like maybe uh, you, you, that's not your place. If you're a child of God, that's your place. That's your place. Nothing else. 